What's up guys? So, in order to get this video out, I was spending almost a day trying to find ways to record my phone screen or just find a good way to mirror it. Um, this one I found, MobiZen uses a watermark, but it has way better quality than the other ones I tried. But I still can't get any sort of audio into the game, uh, into the video. So, pretty much I'll just be commentating over it. Maybe in the future, if you guys want me to do more videos on this game. Uh, as well as Damachi because I also played on my phone, so it's kind of hard to record. At least if I had an iPhone, I'd be able to use my screen, the screen recorder feature they have. But Android has Game Center, and for some reason, this game is not recognized on it. So I don't, I don't know when that's going to be fixed. But anyway, so Naruto X Boruto Ninja Voltage is out. The Japanese version came out last week, so the global version is only one week behind. Um, this game is basically has the ideals of. One Piece Styles and Storm, because you're not pulling for characters, you're pulling for the ninja cards, which are their abilities. Then you also have the horrible, I guess, pull rates from Boku no Hero Academy, if you play the Japanese version. As well as the whole, I guess, because they have accessories, which are kind of the same way ninja cards work. And uh, it kind of has a Clash of Clans aspect, because you have your small base, which there are like two plots of land that didn't unlock yet for me. So you'll have some more buildings to look out for. You also attack players to get yourself chakra and coins. Um, so it, it has multiple aspects to it. And it's a Naruto action game, so it's kind of cool. So let me get down to the basics. When you first start this game, it's also available on iPhone and the Google Play Store. Uh, you should realize, though, you can't play it on the emulator unless you actually uh, bypass the route through Majisk. So um, you pretty much advise to play this on your phone. Uh, but okay, to start the game, I highly recommend rerolling for the simple reason that you will keep 90% of all the stuff you pull in the first multi in the game uh, as your account, just because I have done 5 multis after my reroll and have not gotten any gold, so the rates are less than 1%. Um, you know, it's not confirmed, but I have seen someone post the rates as 0.5% for featured characters and 0.33% for <laughs> anything else, so it's really low. Um, this is what I is what I spent, like, I spent five, 25 rerolls to get myself what I have on this account. And five multis later, I didn't get anything else. So let me first show you what you should aim for uh, when it comes to ninja cards. So you want to get yourself ultimates, which are the five stars, which are the gold cards. So I managed to get on a reroll the Gara ultimate, as well as two Sasuke's, and I managed to single pull one of the Chidori's as well. So that, that's basically how the account was started. But another key thing is to get yourself the Shizune healing card, which is this one. This was pretty much the last thing I got in the fifth multi. Uh, so when you are rerolling, look out for this card, because she makes it really easy, or she makes you struggle a lot less, just because you have a healer in the team. So when you're starting up the game, you do your tutorial, you go to your inbox, you claim the mail from the present box, which gives you 650 gems. You go to summon, and summon on the release celebration pickup summon banner. For the simple reason that the tutorial Naruto starts off at 2-star, and it is easy to 3-star him. And he has a rate up on this banner. So the best start you could possibly get is getting 1 Rasengan, 1 Chidori, and getting that Shizune 2-star heal. You have a very easy start. Um, that's what I would recommend. Obviously, it is this game has really bad rates, so it will take you a lot of rerolls. It will get frustrating. If you're trying to just get into the game quick, then focus on getting one ultimate. You know, getting the heal makes it a lot easier, and it's a two-star card, so it is. it shouldn't be too hard to get. But the ultimates, the goals, that's where it really is hard to get. You also have these characters, Hinata, Sakura, Kakashi, and Gara that have ultimates. Um... Gara's ultimate in Sakura is really sick. I mean, it's like an AoE. I don't know about Hinata, and, and Kakashi has basically uh, another like, like lightning blade, so it's just like the Chidori. Um, Hinata, I guess, also has a single target, so Gara and Sakura, as far as I know, are the only AoEs, and they're actually very solid. So, after you do all your rerolling, and you have your account with at least one ultimate, and if you're lucky enough to have that heal plus the ultimate, or even two ultimates, you're set. Um, I would say you could try another multi or two or stack your gems, but your first priority is to finish the entire story mode. 
you get yourself a lot of story mode characters. And in chapter 4, you get yourself Shizune. So, by the, basically, winning within 80 seconds here on the stage 1 of uh, chapter 4 gives you 70 fragments for her. And if you actually get the takedown auto fan, it's just, it's just basically killing those those air blower traps, you get another extra 40 fragments. So this is where you get Shizune, and with that 2-star heal, she'll be, she'll, be, she'll be helping you out. Attack missions is when you attack players, and special missions is where you grind. Uh, surprise attack missions we don't have yet, so I'm not sure exactly what they are. But let me show you the main aspect of how you get power. I also recommend you to level up all your ninja cards. Uh, raise every single ninja card you have to at least 20, for the reason that, let me show you. So as you level them up, the cost gets a lot higher. So you have this two-star card. Level 20 for everything should be your first priority. It only costs 2,000 chakra. You could honestly go to 30, which triples in price up to 6,000 almost. But for ultimates, they are really expensive. Same for the very rares, which are silvers. You know, 40 takes like I think 20k almost. Maybe even less than that, like 10k. But if you were to go 50, it's 139k. Same goes for the ultimates. The ultimates, I can use 220,000 to go 55. Get every single card that you're using up to 20, 30, then 40 as a soft cap. When you finally have every single ninja, even the ones in your fortress, to 40, then you start maxing out the one that you stack, which is your main ninja. Um, you can also evolve ninja cards, which basically increase the level as well as the rarity. So another 10 levels will give you more stats in a sense. And you can farm these in the special missions as well. You can also synthesize dupes together, but I don't recommend you to do this. Keep all your duplicates. For now, you really need to get the stat boost and get all the power. When your ninjas are more settled in and you're like, just like 100k power on every single ninja you're using and you're just destroying stages, uh, then I guess it's a good time to go for dupes. But dupes would basically raise your ninja skill, so I would be able to get a Chidori plus 3. That would increase the stats as well as the damage that it does. But at this point, honestly, this Chidori, just, he just destroys everything because of the power he has, so I don't need to do that. Um, you get new shinobis here, which the shinobis that you don't get from story are from special missions. But things you should look out for when it comes to ninja power. Awakenings are very important, that's how you get the stars up. Equipments is where your ninja cards go, and they also give you these jutsus. So that's why it's really important to start with the ultimate. Um, and the silver ones would give you the dirt ability, which is the very rare. And then you pretty much want to put in cards to raise battle power. Now, you could do auto pick, or you could just single handedly take, you know, the strongest cards that you have, the highest rarities, and put them on someone and level them up. But I try to keep my formation balanced because it, it really helps out in the stages. Ninja tools we don't have yet. Um, after the first week of the game, we will get guild coins and you can buy yourself some ninja tools. So that's something we just don't have access to at this moment. And abilities, you get these kunai fragments or like these kunai points from certain stage requirements and you can unlock these for stats, which is really good. Um, but you unlock more of these at different awakenings, so you have to farm for fragments. Right now I'm working on 4 star Sasuke. But, that goes over the ninjas. And don't worry, if, if it seems confusing, play through the tutorial. The tutorial tells you basically everything, or most of the things I'm going to show you. I'm just giving you guys my knowledge and telling you what to focus on. Then you have the monument. You have the restaurant that gives you the coins, the monument that gives you the chakra. Then the shrine stores it, and the bank stores your coins. So, you need to upgrade all four of these buildings in order to upgrade your base. Um, it caps out at 15, which I would recommend you rushing this to at least 8 as fast as possible, so you can get the highest fortress upgrade. So, the next part of the game is when your village is taken care of, you have the fortress to worry about. Um, I recommend you to either save up pretty much to um, 70k and get a rank 6, which I got Manda. Um, I haven't seen anyone have Katsuyu, and I have seen Gamabuntas. So, if you're impatient, go for these. If not, save for the very last one, which costs you seven or 400,000 coins, and it's possibly the best one in the game. Um, simply for the reason that the ninjas and all the monsters, like whatever, the, the NPCs that are on your side are level 20, and you have a Kurama to guard it. Plus, this Kurama is godly stacked. I mean, it has 27k attack. It will one-hit your entire team, 
The only way to deal with Kurama is to use an ultimate ability um, in the actual attack. So, and you also have four ninjas for supports that you have to beat through, besides the code to your base. So, as far as how fortresses work, the tutorial will tell you that. There's really not much I, I really have to tell you about that. There's also the extra installations feature, which I didn't unlock yet. But I assume it just lets you buy like more traps and place them down just to make it more difficult. So we have all that taken care of. Um, also, another thing is I have a guild in the group. This is basically for all the people that have been playing in, in the Discord server with me. So if you want to join, search for Kaiser Corp. Make sure it is capital sensitive. And when it comes to approval style, put approval system. Um, mostly for the reason that I want people to send applications so making it public. Just so I can accept people, because for the most part, I wanted to keep it to people who, who watch my videos as well as are in the Discord server. So as long as you just apply, or you can even go to the Discord and, and message me saying you applied. I check the applications frequently. So there's 15 spots left. I, I don't know if you can get more than that, honestly. Like if there's a way to raise guild levels later on or increase the amount of people that can be in your guild. But so far we have 15 out of 30. And uh, definitely, you know, it's going to be first come, first serve at this point. If you guys want more information personally, then I would just say join the Discord and ask your questions. Uh, then I'll be able to answer them better over there. So, you have all that taken care of. You have your rerolled account. Well, at least one ultimate and preferably that heal. You could, per personally, I started without the heal. and But I had two different ultimates and my Sasuke was really stacked. So it's kind of a bad example. But you don't necessarily need the heal to play the game, it just makes it really easy in the beginning. So after you do story mode, then you start going to special missions. Now these are used to synthesize and upgrade your ninja cards. Um, I haven't tried the 57k one since I got my power boost, so I'll need to try that later today. Otherwise I can't upgrade my Chidori stream. But you want to do all of these hero battles. Now the hero battles give you fragments. This is where Naruto gets a edge over Sasuke because he starts two star at the end of the tutorial. And from doing all of these, you get 80 fragments. So he'll be 80 out of 100 and you only need to farm 20 more just to get him three star. Uh, while Sasuke, he starts one star and doing all these gives you 80. So you'll be able to get him two star, but then you have to grind that extra three star. So obviously the higher the difficulty, the more stamina is required, but the rewards are a lot better. Three stam gives you mostly chakra and maybe like one fragment at the end. Six stam gives you uh, a lot of like at least one of each fragment and you can get a possibility of two. But nine stamina, it can give you between two to five fragments for everyone that you see. And it gives you way more higher chakra amounts. So I recommend you do the highest stamina you can do. Obviously, when you start off the game, you're not going to be able to do the 40k. You probably need to have everyone around 30k power, if not higher. Your main has to be like at least 50k, with everyone else being 20 to 30k. And if you have Shizune, it'll be a lot easier because she'll be healing. So it all depends if you have she have her as a healer. Um, but you want to burn all your stamina on whatever you're sleeping for. First, get everyone. Complete all the requirements because this is how you get Hinata. Um, this is how you get Gar, this is how you get Sakura, as well as Kakashi. So you get these four ninjas that you can't obtain from the story mode. And it's honestly not too hard. The game will be frustrating at first. You'll, like, you'll be wondering how to raise power and you need, need to basically raise power really fast. All I can say is just take your time. I mean, it's going to take a few days of grinding and it's going to take a little bit for you to understand the game. So the strategy I have for, well, at least at first I needed to have a strategy because I was just overpowering the stages with my Sasuke. But basically what I would do is... Auto up until the boss room, and as Sasuke, I would run around the room to isolate the boss and just Chidori him. It would instantly kill the boss. So that's the kind of the easiest strategy you can have to manage doing nice stam. Um, but Shizune really makes the game so much easier. And another thing you'll notice is that auto just keeps running into stuff and walking into traps. So best to play manual if you aren't strong enough to overpower the stages. Otherwise, just play at your own risk with that. So you have your main ninja, which you can use jutsu even when you're auto. Um, and you also have three supports. Now, there are two there are two characters in the game so far that are ranged types, which would be 
Shino and Tamari, I believe. I think they're the only two ranged ninjas you can have right now. So, it's honestly would be a good idea to have one of them on your team from a distance. But you really should... You should only use them if you have their ninja cards. Like, I have Shino's ninja cards because I don't think his ultimate is in the game, though. But I have his first three, three abilities. So, ranged ninjas are going to help you out a lot. Most, of, I think all the enemies you fight... Not all the enemies, they're all archers. Um, but, like, 90% of all the enemies you fight are, are in melee range. So, having a Tamari or Shino attacking from a distance is going to give you extra support. A healer is highly recommended. And you also have yourself pretty much... Uh, anyone you have an ultimate for, you should definitely use. Because Gara will often use an ultimate and it'll do a lot of damage. And for moments like that, I just wait to Shidori the last boss and it finishes the stage. So the game is pretty straightforward. Um, farm for fragments to get awakenings. This is pretty much the best way to raise power. Because you have to just keep farming chakra to max your ninja skills. If you don't have awakenings and ninja cards to go for, then you'd have to go for these, uh, I don't know, like these evolution material trials. And you would basically need to do expert to work on four stars and higher. So if you're doing like three stars and lower, you'd be fine if you can clear up to 49k. But that would be an extra way to get you levels. So either way, the game revolves around getting chakra, getting materials. Typical grinding. Now, do hero battles for your stamina when you're done with story mode and all that. And then this is where you do attack missions. So, at my point, I only face like Kurama forts. It'll be very rare that I don't face one. Here we go. So his total power is 148k. Mine's a little bit under 200k, so I should be fine. Um, uh, typically, when I go up against a Kurama, I have to Chidori it. And that's pretty much the only way you'll be able to kill Kurama. Is you have to use your ultimate to destroy him. And you have to kill him fast. Like, you have to do it right before he does his swipe. If he swipes you, your whole team dies. Um, I've actually managed to beat Kurama without an ultimate before. But uh, my Gara and my Naruto died, so it was only my Shizune and Sasuke. And by the time I got to the battlefield, I got destroyed because the guy had four ninjas and they all had the ultimates. <laughs> so, the game is honestly fun. I honestly wouldn't recommend you to spend on pulls. Because for my five multis, there was really nothing good. Or at least... Oh, there we go. Okay, so I might die though anyway. Okay, so he still kills Shizune because of like the howl or whatever he does. Which is kind of bad. But in those cases... It's a good thing I actually caught it on video, because when I attack Fort, sometimes the crown was off cooldown. But anyway, I lost Shizune. Uh, you get Chakra back, and ultimates have longer cooldowns than regular ninjutsus. But in big forts like this, it really sucks I lost Shizune, because I might actually lose the fort now. But attacking forts can be really difficult. I, I've honestly been struggling. Um, I, I do a lot better against Kurama forts. But it all depends on just what they have in the battlefield. I mean, they can have four ninjas with ultimates, and if they all ultimate you at once, you're just screwed. So that's, that's honestly the what always gets me every time. But this is how the game works out, to be honest. Uh, you really, you get stamina and your shurikens back really fast. I think stamina regens once every three minutes, and the shurikens are like once every five. Uh, but you get your stuff back really fast. Like, you keep getting notifications. So if you're looking for something to do, I, I like the game, but there's not much to do at this point. I can honestly hope that we get weekly updates. But if you guys need any help, just hop into my Discord and just ask questions and I'll answer over there. Um, you know, I've, I've been trying to help anyone that's, that's been on my guild so far and give them advice and, and what I've been doing. I can say that I'm enjoying the game, you know, despite it being a grind fest. I did get really lucky with the reroll. I can agree with that. I mean... I've, I, I've, I've seen people reroll 100 times before they start an account. You know, 25 rerolls is still a lot, but there are people that have to do it, like, way worse than me. So here is where it gets tricky. Um, he has a Gara Shizune. You know, I honestly wanted to Chidori the Sasuke, but I missed anyway. So yeah, like, so at this point, you you pretty much don't want to be on auto. It's It's really bad. And I'm, like, getting just... I'm just getting stuck. I can't even move. So... Yeah, when you get to the boss room, you probably want to take off auto. I just kept getting knocked down, though, even if I got off it. So the Sasuke Sharingan skill increases evasion. But that's how it gets, you know. If you, if you win the fort, you get scrolls. You get coins as well as your chakra that you steal. 
If not, you get these, I guess, invasion coins. I forget what the name is for them. Fortress coins. Which, the fortress coins are helpful. They're over here in the top right in a shop. Uh, fortress metal shop. Now you can buy fragments here to speed up your awakenings. I've been focusing everything into Sasuke, and I just simply, basically, I grind the fragments for everybody else. With my team, I'm working on getting Shizune 2-star, and then I'm going to go for Gara 2-star. Um, after that, I'm pretty much going to just keep going for 4-star, 5-star Sasuke. Maybe maybe tomorrow I'll get rank 10 base. I mean, it's 930,000 coins, but I get the next awakening level, which I really do need to go for that. The game is pretty much straightforward. Um, I know the video seems, I don't know, it seems like the video may be confusing for some of you, but just give the game a try. Play the tutorial. It's gonna tell you everything I told you as far as, uh, at least it'll teach you gameplay wise, and all you really need to know from this video is basically how to, what to reroll for, and go for the story mode, clear the story mode, focus on special missions for stamina, and focus on attack missions. And that's all you do. It's these two buttons right here. Um, and obviously you want to keep raising your power. Keep leveling up your ninja cards. Uh, that's, that's pretty much the focus of the game at this point. And like I said, you want to have a really good team. So your team should consist of the ninjas that you have the most ninja cards for to actually give abilities. Now, not all ninja cards give abilities, believe it or not. So... Uh, you know, there's a lot of Sasuke ones, especially. So let me give you an example. This one gives the Sharingan. Alright, see, this one, okay, this one gives a Fireball. This one gives no attached ninjutsu or ultimate ninjutsu, but it gives stats. And as far as, bas you basically want to have Sasuke's cards be on Sasuke and vice versa. Sometimes you'll have, like, cards that are higher rarity and you'll just take them for power. Like, at first... I, before I had Gara, I put my Gara's ultimate on Sasuke. So, when you first start off the game, auto-pick everything. Pick the ninja you want to start with. I could say, if the game gets better updates... Also, next week we should be getting, I think, co-ops are introduced on the 30th of, no of November. As well as the Might Guy, um, like the Might Guy event is coming out. Where you'll be fighting Kisame and you can get Might Guy fragments, so that'll be interesting. I hope they actually give us cards as well, because I don't think I have any Mike Guy cards. And I don't know if they're in the game. Also, now, now is the time to start, because we get the release celebration bonuses going on. So, for logging in 10 days, you get all this Serata stuff, which will boost her. You get, um, basically, her ninja cards with ninjutsus. So, you get, you basically get the three jutsus except her ultimate, which is really helpful. You also get Boruto from the beginning. Uh, yeah, you get one Boruto card. Oh, these are the ninja cards. Oh, you also get his fragments. So right now is the time to start. You have a week for all this. I think all the week, like, I guess, celebration stuff ends next week. So start the game now. Uh, get your rerolls in. When you're done rerolling, keep playing story mode. Join the guild. Join the Discord if you want more info. Uh, hopefully this video helps you guys out a little bit and gives you information. And at least starts you off into the right path. But I can say the, the game is a grind, but I've been enjoying it. And I'll catch you guys next time.